kick off the uh, 9 14 2023 special meeting tonight of the Conservation Commission of the Town of Deerfield. Uh, it's 6 p.m. and we're holding this remote on Zoom. And certain meetings normally held at the municipal offices are being held remotely with adequate alternative means of public access were required, public participation provided in accordance with House Bill Number 58 of the 193rd General Court, which extend the governor's March 12, 2020 order suspending certain provisions of the Open Meeting Law, MGL, Chapter 38, Section 20, until March 31, 2025. Um so it was posted on the town's website and every, all the meeting IDs were there. Um, so the meeting is called to order. Meeting guidelines, it would be to speak one at a time, follow the Deerfield Code of Conduct, uh, be respectful, considerate, courteous, concise, and non-repetitive. And if others show up, uh, you know, if you wish to speak, please address the chair for uh, the okay to do so and and uh, unless you're doing the presentation one to two minutes for uh, each uh, participant would be uh, appreciated uh we go around and do a roll call for identifying members uh sean libby sean libby present uh kate devlin kate devlin here and mary claudier and mary claudier here and pete law here uh, ben Byrne. Ben Byrne is not on yet, so we have um, four of the five commissioners. So we do, we are set to go. And uh, we have Amy on from the office to help us along here this evening. Uh, first order of business is the minutes from our last meeting of 824-23. I believe everybody has received those minutes. Um, and Mary was not present last time, but the rest of the uh, commissioners were. Um, anybody have any questions or thoughts for um, revisions or any changes to the meetings as posted? No, I don't see any and I don't hear any. So then I take a roll call to accept the uh, Deerfield Conservation Commission meeting minutes of August 24, 2023 as submitted. I'll second the motion. Do you want to make the motion? And I don't, the motion? Yeah, I didting know <laughs> if he was making the motion. I moved to accept the meeting minutes of May 24, 23 as written. <laughs> I'll second it then. All right. <laughs> Just so we either, we either had a motion second or duplicated yeah. or triplicated, but I think we're there. And um, Ben's so do here it. too. Oh, Ben's here. Okay, great. Hi, Ben. Oh, okay. The... Hey, gotcha. Yep. All right. Got the whole show. Great. Um, so the motion's on the table. has been seconded. Is any other comments? Discussion? Seeing none, then we'll do a quick roll call on accepting the motion. Uh, John Libby. Don Libby, aye. Kate Devlin. Kate Devlin, aye. And Mary. And Mary Cloutier, abstain. Yeah, and Ben Byrne. Ben Byrne, aye. All right. Uh, Pete Law, aye. A motion passes uh, 4 to 0 to 1. Yeah, Ben, you got a little bit of a, a good electric voice going today. Yeah, the... Uh... Internet, it's not stellar right where I'm at, or cell service, I should say. All right. All right. We're making it out. That's good. Um, so the next order of business is uh, is old business. Um, so we did have, we talked about last, in August, the end, we ratified a number of the emergency certificates. Um, we did have to go back to DEP. Uh, to request extensions, and we have received extensions for uh, Pine Nook Road. That extension is uh, in place until September 24th, and also the DA Culvert and the Wapping Road uh, work, uh, which is extended to October 5. Um, I was out with... Um, Chief Pachorek and uh, Kevin from DEP earlier this week were looking at Pine Nook Road. Uh, I don't, I'm not sure if anybody's gone through there recently, but they, um, it's almost back to 
it's looking good. Um, we uh, got a bunch of erosion control in place where they've graded it out and reseeded going down to the brook. Uh, most of the, all the riprap stuff's done. All the guardrails are in. Uh, yesterday they did the uh, first layer of the pavement. Um, so over the next week, they'll be bringing up all the infrastructure, the, the manholes and such, and do a final paving, uh, I believe, towards the end of next week. Um, so Pine, Brook, uh, Pine Nook um, should be done well before the 924 deadline. Um, the town is having difficulties um, getting contractors at this point. Uh, we've gone through a lot of them, um, but I believe we have... I'm not sure which one it is, um, lined up for Wapping Road starting next week. And that has to be done by 10-5. Um, the DI Covert, I'm not sure where that's at. Also, just to bring up the date, Lower Road is is done. Um, the, the road is open now on that way area um, where the big washout was is, is completed. There's some uh, one or two areas further up the hill, up the road, that have to be a little... Um, stabilize a little bit more but the uh that that road is back and open so we're getting there i do expect another um emergency request is, i might be for hoosick road mm, don't hold me to that um but i believe that'll come in over the next week or two um to look at that one so the town is, is definitely making progress and wow it's amazing what um uh, what the town went through um, and some of these projects that are, have been underway. It's um, the amount of work that have been done by the DPW and the contractors and, and chief. Uh, it, it's been quite exceptional. So we're getting there. Anyways, that's the updates and we do have some extensions. Um, any questions on, on those items? No. You know, if you have time to take a, a ride up Pine Nook, I think the road is open. Maybe it's still as closed, but um, take a look because there's erosion control. If you see anything that you see that might be out of line there, I had them add that when they when they did the final grade. Um, but if you see anything, let me know. And when we do Wapping Road, that one's going to be a little bit more interesting and in establishing just where I'm going to have them put in the um, erosion control barriers probably on the west side of the road if you're heading south. Um, but it, it, that'll be an interesting one. And there's probably, oh, I would say, um, at least eight culverts and that'll have to be replaced uh, on the road. Um, and the swale has been done and so forth. So that'll be another um, you know, fairly big project going forward. Um, any questions then or anything? Nope. Good. Uh, and under the new business, um, erosion at Mill River 291, 293 Conway Road. Um, this is behind Picarcy's um, sausage place. And I met out there yesterday uh, with John Pekarski. Um And we looked at you know, this is the end of the brook, if you will, coming down Conway in 116, and it goes behind his land and down to um, Pauline Gridden's land and down over the hill. And it is all on, it's all in private hands it's, um, where the um, conditions occurred. And so the town really can't do much about it. It's also on the state and it's, it's off to the side, but there's, I have some pictures I took yesterday, but there's a tremendous amount of erosions on some of the banks going through and it's really cutting into his, um, his property. Um, I talked to him a while, uh, he needs to do, he's, he's thinking about doing a couple of things, looking for some small business loans or grants to, to help with emergency response. But I think he'll, uh, before he comes to us, um, he'll need to, you know, do some engineering study on, on what is uh, required there. Uh, Amy, I, I, I meant to send you a note today and I just got, I was out of here all day. I, I, didn't, I thought I'd be back, but um, so I'll send you a note um, tomorrow about, he's like kind of looking at which um, 
the list of engineers that we have on file and and so forth so um i'll get you that um uh, going forward so that was just that that's new business so it's nothing for us right now but uh if he does decide to go ahead because it is all private area um he'll have to do it on his own but it'll be because it's riverfront and boarding uh bbw down in that area um you'll have to do a an noi at some point um so we'll see where that one goes but that's that's all that one was i just did a, a quick site visit to and i think it's good for us to do some of these preemptively um go out and work with the town you know the folks the the uh you know the residents and and if they have questions to take a look at it i you know i didn't give them any total indicate you know what he can or can't do or anything like that um but take a look at it and maybe help them out a little bit um on what the process may, may be and what the process would be you know before they have to come to us so that was good there um the next one is actually the main discussion tonight is the ANRAD for the Ad Hoc Senior Housing Committee on the town campus. And I believe that was going to be from um, Berkshire Design. And I'm not sure if we have anybody from the applicant on this evening or not. Uh, yeah, I thought they said someone was coming. Um, like I said, I, I don't know if he thought the meeting was 6 30 i certainly gave him the link and i would have assumed that just would have i didn't think to give him the time details because i thought he you know would have gotten them um, yeah um <laughs> well we can you know it's 15 minutes um yeah. we can all sit and tell jokes and yeah do whatever um why do you think 6.30 versus 7? I don't know. I don't know. I mean, just because our meetings, well, I guess our meetings used to be at 7. Um, I will email him. I don't think I have a phone number for him, unfortunately, but let me see what I can do to get hold of him. There's an office phone number on his application, but I'm not sure if that's his cell phone number or not. Uh, yeah, so the problem is the person from Berkshire who applied um, is has COVID, oh, so Jess, she yeah, can't okay. do it. So, yeah, so let me find, and I think, what did Chris tell me? I thought he said he was going to be here, Chris Chamberlain. Is there other stuff we can cover other. that, like, was Yeah, there we can jump to mail and other items and, yeah. We can do that. Um, Amy, just yeah, while I'm thinking of it, though, that. I sent you a, a note a little while ago, and I never got the comments from uh, DEP on this one, other than the, oh. Oh, the I north thought, thing. I, but, I thought I sent. Yeah, oh, so I, um, maybe we can uh, now pop that up eventually. I but... those... Yeah, I can send those to you right now, actually. Okay. So we can uh, hold this one. General discussion. Any in the next item? Anybody have any g general discussion? of items not on the agenda tonight uh, mail um, we I don't know of any mail that we received in the last two weeks um, items unanticipated before posting um, I was looking at some of the um, items today so one thing that I saw we are getting a lot of um, notices from MACC um, the association that we belong to relative to their fall um, conference coming up. And during the fall conference, they have, um, I guess, specials on training sessions uh, that they have. And Kate, you you completed all of them. You got all eight done. You're, you're checked <laughs> off. I think I have four or five done. Sean, not sure where you'd stand. Two or three. Two or three. Um, Anne-Marie, I'm not sure if you get those notices or not. If not, we can send them to you. Yeah, no, I haven't gotten. Yeah, all right. So I I did, we... Casey Warren did kind of slap my wrist because I had to bring her the bill for yeah. the three that I had signed up for. And she said, we're really like, I don't know. You had doubled, I think, the tr the value of training uh, dollars 
for the, for this year from last year so that we could do more i think and we I think could do perfect. yeah maybe not a double but we can do more but we do want to um if this, that's going to be my question to everybody if anybody wants to do some uh we should go through amy and she can register us and then the town can pay direct instead of doing it on your own so i was looking at the the series and i'll probably do at least a couple there's 65 dollars each um Sorry. You'll be there um, during the fall conference day. No, I won't be going, but they have the uh, conferences like um, the different ones. They run from uh, October 4th to uh, November 1st as far as actually they start. Yeah, one of them was already done. Um, and so you can do them like virtually just, you know, just get online and and work through them for a couple hours. Um, so we did have our budget extended this year by 500 bucks um but I'm, I'm trying to get a trying to get a few other things in place i think we're going to finally get like safety vests for us all <laughs> that's in the in the play so that when we are like when i was out on 116 yesterday i kind of thought that would be good for all the cars going by to see me uh, i would absolutely take advantage of especially asynchronous courses um okay yeah, that would be tremendous. Thank you. So, and Mary, when uh, I'll have, I'll either shoot it to you or I'll have Amy do it. But as a new commissioner, within the first year, you get the first one free. Um, there's a new commission uh, commissioner orientation. Have you taken that yet? Nope. Nope. Okay. So we'll get you that information, and then you know maybe, Sean, if you want to do a couple, I want to do a couple. And Mary want to do a couple. We can probably that would be uh, sixty five, one hundred thirty. Yeah, you know maybe we could so, could run it that way and see where our budget lies at this point. But um, we'll get all the information out to you because I do have it down that um, I want to sit in on a couple because, like I said, I think I have three or four more. I think three more to go, and um, yeah. so it's good to have everybody, you know, kind of checked off and you get your little certificate and. Everything's good. And you, you I know, get a yeah, press release and everything. <laughs> yeah, and Mary, we got you uh, signed up with Mac, didn't we? I thought we did. I I don't have they any. Need, yeah, they need an email to get uh, her on their list. Um, I can send yeah, the link. Thought, uh, okay. Okay, I thanks. Thought... That would be great. You're probably right, and I'm probably not remembering. I yeah, thought no, it was no. on well, a, check I, don't... I thought it was on the invoice that we did in July, but maybe not. Um, yeah, yeah, I thought so too, but um, okay. But then you do have to, Anne Mary, you know, go onto their site, their website, mm -hmm. um, register, uh, <laughs> then you'll start getting their information and their emails and stuff. And it, it's a good, it's a, it's a good group. It's a good association. They they have a lot of information available. They have a lot of publications, regulations. Um, you know, I get those courses are not they're not asynchronous. They they yeah. run certain days and certain times. Um, yeah. Okay. It, it's like a couple of hours in the evening kind of thing. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah. And you know, just let me know, Sean and and Ben and and Anne Mary, if anybody wants to do it, just send me a note, and then I can kind of figure out where we are in the budget and who's going to show up for which ones. Um, I know I, a couple that I want to do, but yeah, I will do all of mine through the state um, because we have money for training and I have the availability to go to these workshops and have the <laughs> state fund it. And we have like, you know, a quarter of a million dollars in funding for things of <laughs> <laughs> this nature. So count me out. I didn't ever mean, you know, like with Casey, I was like, oh, all right. So, and I'm going to be at the fall conference chair. Oh, you will. Okay. VR, so I'll be there. Okay. All, right. all right. Yeah. Well, the, the town conservation or uh, yeah, the conservation commission budget, I got up to $2,000 a year uh, after this year. Um, we, I had a fight for that, but we got there. So you got a lot <laughs> the state's got a little bit more, I guess. Bigger budget. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, let me know though. And um, it would be nice to, you know, over the next year or two to get everybody deployed. Yeah. <laughs> um, 
Yeah, the next meeting is September 28th. Uh, I know we have a, I think there's only one item I know about is the open certificate of compliance for um, DA uh, by the health center. And I sent them the um, email, I think, you know, end of last week, beginning of this week to say, you know, Kate and, and I were out there for a site visit that we want to put in another 10 or 12 um, bushes uh, on that bank and convert and revert the waters flowing up on top. Uh, but other than that, it was pretty straightforward and I'll uh, check it before our next meeting. Uh, so except for uh, item 11 adjourn, I think we probably have to stick around for a few more minutes. <laughs> yeah. You know, it, uh, it just struck me. I mean, I guess Chris is used to our meetings being at seven i can forward you all an email that he sent uh talking about the comments that um that were made by mark so why don't i do that right now okay and have to be cc i'm sort of desperately i don't have phone numbers for anyone so i have been writing emails hoping that they'll look okay Oh, and I have to get my, okay. Okay, so I'll send that. Okay, so I just sent you uh, Chris's email. He says he doesn't see any major issues. Uh, let's see. Oh, the North Arrow missing on the map. He fixed that and he sent me a new map which I forwarded to Mark and Mark said, that's great. Um, Chris doesn't see any major issues with the other comments. We acknowledge that land under water bodies and waterways, LUWW was not delineated and cannot be approved. This resource area is unlikely to be impacted by the project. So we will just withdraw that part of the request. We can easily go through the other comments tonight, which we could if he would show up. Oh, wait, I've got a phone number for him, although it looks like a work phone. But what the hell, I'll give it a try. Okay. Yeah, just to remind everybody before we get, uh, if it does get started, uh, this is a submittal of an ANRAD. Uh, ANRAD is an, a, a, an abbreviated uh, notice of uh, uh, resource area delineation. Uh, we did a similar one with um, sunny days, not happy days, sunny days. Um, and it, it took quite a while to, to get there. But basically what an ANRAD is looking at is confirm the delineation of the bordering of vegetated wetlands and, um, and any other resource areas. Um, and if you look at the, you know, uh, 310 CMR, um, you know, the NRAD, the proposed work, uh, you know, the NRAD is applicable if the proposed work is within the buffer zone or riverfront. Uh, it will um, disturb less than a thousand square feet of riverfront, and it does not require a uh, Army Corps of Engineer determination. Um, so basically, it's for establishing the BVWs and the resources, uh, any other resource in the area. And if you looked at the application, I don't want to get into it without the applicant being here, but we'll look at uh, riverfront and bank and land under water and so forth and so on, because all those things come into play as, long, uh, as well as a BVW. Um, so this is kind of a determination of, okay, do we agree or not to agree with the um, delineation? And then I go on to a ORAD, I believe it is, and or a, a, a formal NOI to um, follow up with this. So um, we can require engineering study and wetland specialist studies and so forth. Um, and so, so um, things that we need to consider as far as flood control, uh, flooding area. Uh, FEMA has jurisdiction there. The FEMA maps for Deerfield uh, have been notoriously 
or every time I try to look at them. Um, so an ORAD would then go to a form uh, 4B, which has different categories of whether we accept it, modify it, reject it type of thing. Um, and what I would be looking for from um, the presentation, because um, you can see it in the meeting notes, and I'm not sure if folks read through this, but there was a uh, wetland delineation done by Wendell Wetland Services, and, and um, had a hard time following the map and trying to figure out what was there. So, um, so yeah, I'm just looking forward to you know more detailed. Um, presentation of the engineering of where the zones are, where the delineations are, and we have, you know, uh, BVW zones and riverfront zones. So we have 100 foot, 200 foot um, water under, land underwater, and there may be some culverts and different things involved there. And Plus some of the designs, if you get into riverfront area, are there going to be any bridges? Are there going to be anything going over? And that all adds to um, a lot of conversations about um, how it might proceed. Mm. I wonder, uh, maybe we do we want to take a break until 7 o'clock to see if they show up? I yeah, we could that do that. There's a, I see somebody on my screen, uh, Melody Clark. I'm not sure if Melody is involved with brochure design or don't know the name. Yeah, not not a name. Let me just check my emails again from the press. Uh, da, 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 inbox. Oh, sorry. Oh, oh, okay. Chris, ah, oh, Chris says he's coming now. Uh, okay. So I think Chris ought to be here any minute. Well, wow, there he is. Just timing's perfect. perfect. Sorry, I think when I was looking for the meeting this uh, afternoon, I saw the typical meeting time of seven on the Conscom website and didn't look any closer. <laughs> oh, I need yeah. to update that. We've changed it to six. Sorry. Yeah, that, thank you. That's a good reminder that I should change that uh, text on the site. Yeah, good. Yeah, thank you. Well, Chris, thanks for joining. We, you uh, actually gave us plenty of time to go through all our, our other agenda items. So, oh, very good. It, it's all yours now. <laughs> Great. Um, are yeah, are so, you set to go, or do you? Uh, is anybody else showing up? Or, um, I think I uh, think it's just me. Um, and I have all of the files in a folder. I just need to get there because obviously I thought I had another half hour to get this set up. Um, <laughs> well, no, take your time and. Uh... And while you're working through that, then uh, we will uh, open the hearing on the ADRAD for the Ad Hoc Senior Housing Committee uh, Town Campus um, this evening. And we'll, uh, I'm sure, enjoy a presentation here in a few minutes, but we'll give Chris some time to get everything together. And hey, Chris, I, I'm sure you have a lot of um, files and things to share with us. So, you know, take over the screen whenever you wish. Sure. Um, okay. I have it all right here.
Great. Um, so uh, Chris Chamberlain, um, civil engineer with Berkshire Design Group, who is working with the town on this uh, prospective project. And I'll I'll admit up front that uh, I am third in line to actually be at this meeting. Um, project manager Rachel Loeffler is uh, presenting to the Amherst Historical Commission and Jess Schoendorf, who's the main designer, is out sick. Um, so I've been Brief. So I've I've familiarized myself with um, all of the work that was done on the delineation, um, but have not necessarily been involved in sort of the larger project. But of course, we're here to talk about the delineation. So just uh, bear in mind, yeah. you're welcome to ask any questions about that. But I may not have uh, many answers. Um, all right, Chris, we appreciate that. And just just to to note that this this is a, an abbreviated notice of. Uh, resource area delineation at ANRAD, and it's basically, uh, you know, looking at confirming the delineation of the BVW and the other resource areas. So does everybody agree with what the request is? That's what you're looking for, right, Chris? Absolutely. Yeah, okay. So we'll look at a lot of the different resource areas and, um, oops. Great. Um, and yep. so, yeah, that it, it, my Zoom sometimes with these um, drawings that have a photo behind them is a little laggy. Um, so, yes, yeah, so this is uh, the property. Um, this plan was submitted as part of the ANRAD. We did um, submit a slightly revised version this afternoon. Uh, Mark Stinson pointed out that the uh, North Era was missing. So we went ahead and submitted an updated drawing so that you could have the, the corrected one in the record. Um, obviously, you're all familiar with this site with North Main Street to the bottom. So this is turned 90 degrees from North, North Main Street on the bottom and Conway Street with the Town Hall Police Station building here uh, and the buildings on North Main Street down here. Uh, and there's a number of different parcels that are either owned by the town or are prospectively to be owned by the town um, involved here. And so we have had uh, Ward Smith, w Wendell Wetland Service, um, go out and flag these wetlands. I imagine he's done that dozens of times for Deerfield projects in the past. He works for us uh, all the time um, and, and does pretty thorough work. And what we've presented um, on the NRAD, the purple line that you see here is, uh, uh, so Ward went out, uh, reviewed uh, the, the plants and soil information. Um, I believe his data logs were submitted as part of the NRAD package um, and delineated uh, physically in the field, the uh, mean annual high water mark, which is um, primarily uh, based on the break in slope as defined in the Wetlands Protection Act along this purple line for Bloody Brook um, at the back of the site, as well as BVW, um, both within the main site here, the green line, and a second BVW that's slightly off the property, uh, but with a potential buffer zone that comes onto the property in this location up here. Um, this uh, stream, as well as the sort of wetland resource areas, are broken by an existing um, access road um, through this location here, which has a culvert, which actually carries the brook through it. Um, so that's why you see sort of a discontinuity in this location. And there's a there's a faint line here showing sort of the limits of, of that access route through here. Um, and so all of those flags, which Ward physically located in the field, um, our surveyors went out and surveyed them. Uh, one of the DEP comments goes to that. These were not GPS by the wetland scientists. Uh, these were surveyed um, on the ground by our surveyors, um, along with uh, all of the existing base plan that you see um, on this plan here. Um, and then based on that delineation on this plan, we've also shown uh, the limits of what would be uh, the 100 foot buffer uh, associated with the BVW, as well as the 200 foot riverfront area. And while it's not really relevant for the NRAD, the limits are what they are uh, when it comes time to actually permit the work on this project. Uh, as you can see, this uh, wetland buffer is located entirely within the riverfront area. And under the Wetlands Protection Act, the, the riverfront standards are to be applied in lieu of the buffer standard uh, because the, the right. riverfront is typically uh, more stringent. So yep. 
the effectively when the project comes for presumably an NOI um, in the future, it will really just be a riverfront project and this this buffer will be good to note and the resource area is certainly important, but uh, but probably uh, not terribly relevant. Um, and um, and so uh, you know, this is the package uh, that was uh, submitted to the commission uh, with a summary. Um, and so uh, we'll note that um, in the application, uh, we had requested delineation of the BVW, delineation of bank noted as mean annual high water and first observable break and slope, as well as land underwater. Um, DEP comments, which we'll go through for thoroughness in a minute, but trying to hit them as they're relevant. Uh, Mark Stinson pointed out that the land underwater was not actually delineated, so it's not possible for the commission to accept that delineation. Uh, it, what's noted here is land underwater being um, defined by mean annual high water. In fact, land underwater is defined by mean annual low water, um, and that was not flagged. So uh, we are withdrawing the request to verify land underwater. It should be uh, essentially irrelevant to the project because we don't anticipate anything going um, that far into the resource areas. Um, and uh, the bank, which, uh, you know, given the uh, very sharp break in the grade out there, uh, you know, in Ward's uh, view as professional wetland scientist, the mean annual high water, first observable break in slope and bank are really all coincident um, through this corridor. Um, and so that's how uh, the, the mean annual high water, and then by extension, the riverfront area has been uh, delineated. So you use the median high level to um, to place that two hundred foot boundary that's on your on your charts. Correct, exactly. And and that's the first of observable break in slope. Um, okay. And so when you say you want to remove the, the land underwater from the application, what um, are you? Yeah. Are... So I, I suppose the, the probably the way to do it is uh, the commission in, you know, issuing their decision would just make no finding on the land underwater because, I mean, I guess you'd say insufficient information to be able to approve that boundary. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. that seems reasonable to you as to how to handle it formally. Yeah, I think there's, um, there is a, doo -doo -doo -doo, I'm just trying to look at the forming here. And I'll admit I've never actually looked at the form on the decision side of the ANRAD, yeah. so. Yeah, I've got it in front of me. I wonder if B modified, um, I don't know. It's modified or inaccurate or well we can we can look at it as whichever is applicable. So yeah. um there's accurate as um BVW and other resources and then a modified other resources. So we could do that or we could say it was just inaccurate, but I'd have to look at that a little bit tighter because those are our three Criteria accurate, modified, or inaccurate, and you can check whichever is applicable on that one. Um, um, and we did list the riverfront as a resource area as part of the NRAD. Um, again, one of Mark Stinson's comments was just noting that the limit of the riverfront wasn't flagged, um, and you wouldn't flag it, that it is uh, a fact that it's located 200 feet from the mean annual high water line. Um, so uh, that's typically done in plan as shown. Um, so the, the limit of riverfront line that we're showing is simply the offset of the mean annual high water line, not an actual flagging of the limit of riverfront. So that seemed to me as a, as a clarification more than anything else. So it's a measurement from the mean high water act, but not what you're saying is the actual 200 foot riverfront. Well, I, I'm not following so, uh, clarification. Let's um, 
let's pull up Mark's comments, which I have right here. Um, yeah. And um, and I think this is this is all of comment one. Um, so the Android notes the applicant is requesting boundaries BVW and Bank are being requested to be approved. Item three C, which is the land under waterway line. Yeah. Uh, items 3C in the, he says the NOI, I think he means the NRAD, um, noting land underwater is being requested, should not have been added as land underwater as it was not separately delineated and is not equal to mean annual high water. Exactly as I explained, mm -hmm. if we had flagged mean annual low water, then we could present land yeah. underwater, but we did not. Um, so that that I think is jibes with with the conversation we were just having that um, however it gets recorded formally on the decision, uh, we acknowledge that you can't approve the limit for land underwater. So then item 3A, which is the bank, and then in a parenthetical mean annual high water line. Uh, item 3A is basically stating that bank and mean annual high water are coincident with each other which is, again, Ward's conclusion based uh, primarily on the fact that there's a very distinct um, break in grades, uh, making it uh, straightforward to delineate those two as coincident. The 200-foot riverfront area was not delineated per the wetland report, but the plan does show the riverfront area. However, since that is a measurement from the mean annual high water line, the only thing really needed is the location of the mean annual high water line where the resource area flag, oh, sorry, that's a separate question. Mm. Um, so I I suppose what he's saying is that you don't approve the riverfront area, you approve the mean annual high water line. And then when we come with the NOI, we'll present the riverfront area based on that accepted delineation. Yeah, because it's going to be totally a riverfront area project when you're said and done. So I think all of that is to say that it's the BVW limit and the mean annual high water line that are, you know, the critical items that that we need to have approved. Um, and that will sort of, in effect, approve the riverfront area, but that's not delineated, so that can't really be subject to the NRAD. Yeah, okay. Um, and then just for completeness, that first comment included the question about whether the resource area flags were surveyed or GPS, and, and they were surveyed. They were surveyed, and yeah, okay. Um, and uh, should we continue through these comments since I have them up? Uh, if you wish, sure. Okay. Um, and so comment number two is the submitted plan appears to require a North Arrow. We've added that and resubmitted the plan with the North Arrow, mm -hmm. uh, which is also the version that I'm showing tonight. Uh, number three, the commission should note the inside of the culvert located by flag WFHW12 also has bank mean annual high water located inside of it. Um, and so which, sorry, forgot which tab I needed to go back to here. Um, and so again, that's this culvert location. I'm gonna to try to zoom in. The screen's probably gonna flash for a moment. Um, so this is that flag 12. Um, and while it's not very clearly shown in this survey because it's sort of at the limits of the property, uh, this is where the culvert runs under the road. And so while our flagged mean annual high water bank uh, runs along this purple line, uh, Mark is noting, and perhaps this needs to be recorded in the decision, I'm not sure, that these essentially connect through the bottom of the culvert and that bottom of the culvert, uh, continue, or in, I shouldn't say the bottom, the inside of the culvert um, continues to be uh, mean annual high water, which we will also have a continuous 200 foot riverfront zone around. Okay. So uh, within the culvert that the mean high water is 
contiguous. It's the same going right through, as you're right. saying, as the brook is. Okay. Yeah. And I believe that becomes relevant when you have very long culverts. Once yeah. the culvert is beyond either 200 or 400 feet, the riverfront area actually gets truncated uh, sharply. But when it's shorter, yeah. continuous right through. Do you know what the uh, length of that is? Because I did look that up. I was had a question on that. So if you want to. The, the length of our culverts? Yeah. Um, I can get that, but I'll have to jump into my work computer, which I have open in the background. Um, so uh, let's finish the comments. I can yep. come back and, and give you that information. Um, okay, so comment four, um, though there does appear to be bordering land subject to flooding in this area, that area is not included. Um, as being a resource area that is being requested to be reviewed and approved under this AMRAD. Um, so I checked on this and Mark is correct. Um, so this is the FEMA map through the zone. And what we can see here is that there is floodplain along associated with Bloody Brook. Um, yeah. And the uh, this location right here is where that access road and culvert is. So on the upstream side of the culvert, we have a flood elevation of 204. And on the downstream side of the culvert, we have an elevation of 202. Um, and so just this is really informational because we're not requesting this delineation, but you can see the 202 contour right here and the 204 contour back here. So given that these are so close to the brook, it's unlikely that we will be doing any work in the future project in bordering land subject to flooding. Um, but if we do as part of the NOI, uh, we would be requesting you know, that, that the commission accept based on these elevations where the floodplain is. Okay. Um... But uh, that's, I, I take this as, as a, an informational note. We did not request that the bordering land subject to flooding be approved and um so then but i think within the request of the NRAD it's the bvw in all associated resource areas isn't that correct the reading the definition hmm. um good question oh no, it's the delineation of the bvw um So our application asks us to indicate any of the resource areas delineated. Yeah. And again, not being familiar with the with the decision form, I don't know if there's a if there's a place to indicate um, additional undelineated resource areas, uh, if that's desirable. To have it in the record. Mm, um. I think, regardless, we're certainly it's, nothing in our application suggests that these are the only resource areas there. They're just the ones we're requesting confirmation on. Right. So, if you come back to us with a full NMI, then there'll be a lot more questions on that. Right. Um, because, yeah. <laughs> I'm sure you've been following what's happening with Deerfield this this year and um, on plains and flooding and is in all this area riverfront is it's it's flood control it's prevent storm damage it's you know confine banks to confine flood waters and you know that's going to be a real real concern as we look at that so um, perhaps it's not part of the ANRAD per se I'm trying to read through 310 here as we're talking but. Um, I thought it was other resource areas, but perhaps it's just BV, BVW. Um, okay, go ahead, because I'll have some, I have a lot of other questions. I don't want to hog it from the other commissioners either. Okay. Sure. <laughs> um, okay, uh, next comment was, okay, and then the next comment is, is seeming to become a standard comment from Mark that the, the commission has the right to um, to have a peer review uh, if they feel it's necessary. Yeah. Uh, given that this is a town project and the town's consultant is is working in the interest of the town, hopefully um, uh, we'll 
avoid that. And I think uh, in this case, the, my understanding is that the, the delineation was pretty clear when he went out there. Um, yeah, well, I want to go through his uh, field notes, so maybe maybe oh. <laughs> I have some questions, so maybe some uh, differences of opinion coming up, but we'll see. Okay, <laughs> uh, and I, I'll admit that if 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 we get into the weeds in, on his notes, I uh, I may or may not be able to to give some thoughts on that. Sure. Um, okay, so that's that. Um, these are all the basic information, um, butters, lots. And so then this is the uh, wetland report, which it sounds like you've read through <laughs> pretty closely at this point, um, which uh, you know generally um, expresses uh, my summary there. Um, and then, you know, Ward, and again, this is not my work, so I'm, I'm, uh, going to try to keep up, um, but uh, he, as his reports typically do, uh, description of the site, the resource areas found, um, the plant communities uh, that were indicative of the wetlands are indicated. Um, uh, and then a summary of some of the resource areas. Um, as well as a property map. Um, and then um, the data forms were included. Um, so I guess I would uh, say, Peter, is uh, I'm happy to, to go through, a, a scroll through this, and we can stop where you have questions. Yeah, and, um, before like I kind of, yeah, I, I do have some that I looked at. And before I do, I just want to open up to the other commissioners. Uh, any other questions up to this point? Um, Negative. No, it's been pretty clear to follow the process. Okay, yeah, great. I don't have any questions right now. All right, thanks. So yeah, if you want to start with um, the Wendell Wetland Services. Um, on his second page, um, and I didn't, didn't quite understand this comment. There are two wetland areas bordering on the brook that lie within what appear to have been once uh, meandering channels for the original brook. Both wetlands lie at the base of a steep upland slope. Do you know exactly where they are and um, why you pointed that out? Um, so um, I believe that he's referring to the two wetlands that are delineated on the plans. Um, and I think uh, typically, I've received a lot of these reports from Ward. Um, he typically likes to have, you know, uh, whatever um, background information to characterize uh, the resource areas that, that he can confidently portray. So uh, my interpretation of what that means is that, you know, uh, brooks, uh, you know, rivers and streams will sure. tend to move back and forth over geologic time. And so based on his view of the land, um, he believes that at one point the stream swung out along these lines, um, given the slopes that lead to them um, and just sort of the the sway with uh, the topography of the land. Yeah. So, so my my I I should rephrase my question. Sure. The question is, he said that there's two wetland areas. I just wanted to know if it's these two that are on the plan, or was he oh. referring to something other um, that's not specified here? No. So these are these are the two uh, yeah. the two that he's referring to, and uh, if I'm not mistaken, they're flagged with different letter series, uh, and so that's typically how we look at different ones yeah so there's an yeah. a wetland and a b wetland and even though yeah. in reality they're all connected by the waterway and they're all a system um just yeah. sort of uh organizationally we talk about them as separate wetlands right nope just uh, just want to make sure that was correct uh sure. west of the covered footpaths flags a1 to a13 uh deep organic soils that that was just an interest to me never mind um
And so just a little further down under is wetland resource areas. Uh, he says the following resource area is not field delineated and does not have any additional buffer zone. Um, it seems to point to the riverfront area, uh, the area within 200 feet of the uh, high water line. So we're using another acronym here on the high water line, but I think it would be the, the same mean high water line. Um, do you know what that means? So I, I interpret this to be essentially the same as the comment Mark was making, that riverfront area. So uh, again, this section of Ward's report lists all of the resource yep. areas that he's looking at. And so riverfront area is a resource area that exists on the site. He defines what that is with the 200 feet from the high water line, but is noting that it was not field delineated. Um, because okay. you don't delineate the, the riverfront area. And then he's so, also noting, as it says in the regulations, that there's no buffer zone associated with the riverfront area. Correct. So this is the same as as the uh, market put out from DEP. I just, Absolutely. It was just kind of a rare line in there that I couldn't quite understand. Yeah. Um, any work within a 200-foot riverfront would require a notice of uh, intent. And yeah, you get a lot within the uh, riverfront area. Um, Um, then he had a Massachusetts inter interactive property map, uh, which I think your map that you just showed me is much better because I cannot figure this one out with his yeah. uh, scribbles on it. Yeah, these. Um, <laughs> so it's a two buffer. It's a two zones. Um, yeah, I'm not sure what this means, but yeah, I know I've, the, I've looked at a lot of these, so I'll explain real quick. Um, so whenever Ward does a delineation for us, uh, he's out there with his Sharpie and he's recording his flags in the field. And then we get this sketch, which is just guidance for our surveyors to go out and figure out what in the heck they're trying to find. And okay. so what you see here is there's two preliminary sets of information in each area. Yeah. One is the high water, one is the wetland and these scribbles are actually the flag numbers um so okay. this helps the the surveyors make sure that they've got all the flags and roughly uh where they are located do you know where he did the, his soil um sampling um it just says upland side and it does the one say sampling point b4 uh yeah. but then there's this little thing yeah there's this thing and it says b4 it's kind of a uh yeah. A horizontal view but i don't know is that just the only soil point he tested um, uh, on the site so to answer the first question i believe this is a section view um yeah. and so the the bbw area located here this is flag b4 and mm -hmm. then five feet from flag b4 into the slope is where that soil sample was taken um, and it's just one soil sample, or did we do a, a, a trenching every few feet, or did um, I know somebody said it's uh, you know water it went to twenty four inches on one, the next one had water at ten inches right. or twelve inches. Um, I didn't know what his process was to to look at the soils and determine with you know what the hydric uh, soils look like ar around the area. Right. Um, yeah, and so what I know of of just uh, Ward's methods is I think he starts with the plants um, and mm -hmm. uses those to get uh, the the general limits of the uh, wetland area, and then um, uses the soils as confirmation. I suspect that's why we see him digging just outside of his delineation because. There may have been non wet, you know, that's the the start of the non wetland plants. But if the soils were indicative of wetland, then uh, that delineation may need to be pushed out further. Um, I am scrolling through just to make sure I don't misstate it, but it does um, seem like that that one B four um, soil sample is uh, the only one that's been submitted as part of the ANRAD. Um, okay, and the whole length of the project is. Somewhere in the thousand foot range on the riverfront, eight hundred and some odd foot. Something like that. So we have one soil sample um, in that in that extension, uh, that area, correct? Correct. Okay. Where is that? And so that's located in in this area here. 
we know with some other projects in town that we've had uh, had to do an extensive um, soil works. Um, yeah. To Sudbury Sandy Loam. Okay. Um, yeah, and and you know, and this was done in going... May, correct? Sorry, what's that? It was done in May. Yeah, May twenty one. Yeah. So typical for this time of year. Yeah. I'm glad he didn't do it in July. <laughs> he, he would have been underwater. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I, I suspect that the, the topography, you know, a sharp break in the plant community with a steep slope, just, um, just upslope of the wetland were, were probably also factors um, into yeah. finding the delineation there. And when you get to the uh, vegetation, this, this is, he calls it sampling point 4B, which is the same as sampling point 4B for soils. So again, that's the upland side and upland side 4B. Uh, I can't figure out because it looks, you know, he has two different wetland areas, sampling point 4B. Uh, one of them shows you know, it's an 80% or it's a, that is a wetland cover and under 4B on the other one on upland side, it shows that it's not, but it's on his field forms. They all say 4, uh, B4. Right. And let's see if the uh, longitude latitude's different. Um, uh, 428, 49, three, uh, no. The, so it's the same exact point, but in the two forms I have, different information yeah oh and so i think um part of the key to that is the first portion of the form uh has a note at the top upland side yeah uh, which i believe so that's the upland side of b4 and then the other one is the wetland side so he's characterizing yeah and so the, and then this sketch but it's the exact same latitude is... latitude so what what what's the the difference you know what's the 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 um the side of it is five feet so is one done five feet difference and then within five feet it's totally different soil so as, I, I couldn't understand this i'm sorry sure. about it yeah yeah so as as you recall the the previous section that we looked at showed the borehole um five feet to the upland side of flag before mm -hmm. this one is five feet to the wetland side of before so what he's doing here is he's got his his flag before set and then he's doing the the soil and plant community to one side and the other, showing the distinct difference um, in the in the soils and the uh, okay. plants in order to justify that that's where the delineation point ought to be. And that's and and thank you for that. And that brings me back to again the area of the riverfront is 840 or 860. I can't find the form right now, uh, but we have one point and before at five feet to one side, it's um, you know, non-wetlands at five feet to the other side, it is. And that takes care of 10 feet of the total 860 some odd feet of the riverfront. Is that correct or is my, am I reading this incorrectly? Um, no, and so uh, it Again, I think this is to the wetland side, not along the delineation, those five feet. So this this is a snapshot of one distinct point. Um, and I'm going to hazard just a little bit of speculation that, um, again, the, the delineation was primarily based upon the plants and topography and the soil work was uh, intended to confirm the accuracy at this uh, sample location. Uh, what I cannot do is give a strong justification one way or the other as to whether uh, that one boring is sufficient or not. Uh, just, I'm just not yeah. well versed in the wetland science enough. Yeah, no, I, I'm, and that's all. And I, I just, um, I was looking at just you know the the specs and hopefully I had them right, but it seemed to be five feet this way, five feet that way. We got a ten foot radius. We're seeing oh, something, sure, sure. something different over here and something different over there, um, which are the, the same type of vegetation, which we expect, uh, but certainly a different uh, percentages of, of each 
and the you know percentage of total cover within a 10 foot radius and that would be just one point along the whole length of bloody brook that 800 and 900 feet or so and there's two wetlands in there um that we have bordering and we have riverfront the whole length of it so um you know the request is to um approve the delineation um so my question is then say so we, we're we have the delineation by flag by uh waterfront water level um so forth but we have one location and i'm not sure if you could show me on the map just where b4 was sure. um relative to um the other wetlands yes i believe it's here okay this location so it's up uh towards the playing field topography's up so it's kind of the flat area uh, and I probably suggest that on his wetland side, we're getting over to the vegetation side over by the school. Um, we yeah, don't have any that... information on the lower area and we don't have, so B4 would be on the Southwest section of that um, wetlands area. Um, I don't have the uh, schematic here on the size, but you know, there's nothing up on top. Uh, there's and there's nothing for the bottom, so it, that's great. So B4 is down at the bottom of the bottom outside of the area, and so no other vegetation forms for anywhere else in either of those wetland areas. Um, not in our submission package. Okay, so we just we just have one one spot, and and I'm not saying it's good or bad. I'm just trying yeah. to determine yes. that what we're looking at that's all that's yeah. correct what um again i think that what you have is that ward's delineation which is uh primarily based on the plants is that at each of those locations he physically reviewed that site for the change in vegetation but has only logged it in one particular location oh right but we don't have that information right correct yep okay um Because some of it is, um, you know, a fairly high percentage of cupboards of, you know, cottonwood and red maple and um, sense of ferns in different areas and stuff. Um, okay. Um, and at the same B4, we did see depleted dark soil on as, as hydric soil indicators. Um and that doesn't have a depth on it, though, because um, we'd be looking at the first level. Of, I'd like to see it at like 8, 10, 12 inch kind of thing. Um, OK. Um, again, I'm just trying to understand the forms and, and not being out there. Sure. Um, it's free water in the test hole. Again, same latitude, longitude, same B4. One had no free water, one did, and that's 10 feet away. Um, yeah, got some jack in the pulpit. That's nice. Uh, arrow weed. Okay. Um, I guess, you know, those are my questions. Um, and I'll leave it to the other commissioners to see if they have any other questions on the details. And I'm sorry to get into a lot of the details, but. Um, reading through that forms and gone through a couple other uh, areas on Bloody Brook there. I, I just, um, yeah, I'm just, um, I just wanted to confirm that it was just that one area that were, that one point that we're looking at. And it was a 10, fo 10 foot radius, if you will, around that, that made the decisions on the, um, in the field notes um on the wetland determinations there okay and if i'm wrong just correct me chris but that's that's what i, I was trying to I read earlier and i'm trying to um yeah. i think everything you just said is accurate okay um with that then uh, i will try to keep quiet for a minute and uh i'll leave it up to the other commission to see if anybody else has any questions on that
let's belabor this point. Uh, just to uh, understand, right? He did this two soil bor bor borings. Um, and that essentially determined that the break in slope was the best determining factor for where the mean annual high watermark was. And, and that laid out the remainder of the delineation, basically because the break in slope is very obvious. Um, um, I want to be careful there, because there okay. are two different break in slopes that are relevant. Uh, okay. Break in slope is in the regs as an indicator of the mean annual high water line of the stream. Um, and so the, the bank and mean annual high water line are in part defined by a sharp break in slope. Separate from that, it so happens that we have BVW where the limit of the area where wetland vegetation is predominant is coincident with a steep slope that comes down to the edge of the wetland. I got you. Okay. Wet so I think that's, that's a good clarification. And, and Sean, I think you said there was two soil points. and I only know of one soil point. Well, is it not that there was a flag before and then five feet downhill, one soil core and five feet uphill, the other soil core? Is that correct? Yes, that's that's how um, I'm. Speaking. Yeah, that that's how we're interpreting it, I think, but it's not. Uh, you know, um, Chris is seeing a lot more of these forms, uh, you know, from uh, from Wendell uh, services, but it's not really specified thing. But uh, yeah, let's make that assumption. That that's probably true. It's, so there's and again, I'd, I'd refer back two to views the, within 10, 10 feet radius. Yeah, and I'd I'd refer back to the the two sections, uh, which again, because this is labeled old oxbow, which is also what Ward described the wetland area as historically being, and then uh, a steep slope up. Um, and this section is seen both on the wetland side log and the upland side log, with the only difference being the location of, of the hole. So I think if you cut a section through the wetland going straight through B4, um, uh, you know, five feet one way, five feet the other is where the two holes were dug. Yeah, I can kind of see that on his is uh, on the two pages now because yeah. um, he has like a little something there, uh, five feet. Um, so depth 24 inches, five. So you may not hit the water because it's the deep, yeah. So it's a two or two, or two. We're going to assume probably from what we can tell is a two, two soil borings if you will and it's probably a, an auger um he doesn't really give the uh, explanation just said it's by regulations and i'm not sure if augers are actually allowed now or not but um so one on each side um so it's within that 10 foot radius sean i believe does that make sense to you yeah and i was yeah. just Sort of confirming that those two test pits uh, and the presence or lack thereof of wetland hydrology was sort of how the remaining um, mean annual high water and BVW were determined for the basis of the flagging. You know, he he basically said, "I think this is the 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 delineation line," and then um, you know, looking at the vegetation and then cored it to to confirm where he thought the line was. So when we review the delineation of the mean annual high watermark, um, we're confirming his delineation based on the vegetation, both upland and wetland side, you know, of these, of this. And, and this is just sort of pointing towards uh, additional facts that point that his delineation is correct. I believe so, but what I don't what I don't know either because the way the um, the vegetation numbers listen to the same place, um, 
at sampling point B4. Um, you know, how far it went up and down the uh, the side of the brook, the riverfront, and what that what that um, actual vegetation determination would be up and down that 900 or something uh, linear feet. Yeah, and, and just one clarification that I want to make is the mean annual high water line is not delineated based on vegetation. Um, and so in, in that's just the, the top of the bank, you said, right? Yeah. 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 And so it, and, and straight out of uh, 10.58, the riverfront standards, um, there's the definition uh, of mean annual high water. And the first point is in most rivers, the first observable break in slope is coincident with the bank full conditions and the mean annual high water line. Mm -hmm. um, and then there are additional indicators that you use if that break in slope is not clear or doesn't exist. So it's it's really topography for the mean annual high water. Uh, the vegetation is critically important for the BVW delineation. All right. And we're talking about two BVWs only because of a culvert. Other than that, uh, you know, essentially we're saying we're will as a committee be deciding is it um, justifiable uh, based on what field work was done to say that that whole line is accurate. Um, you know, and, and I think what we're looking at is just two soil corings on one of the BVWs, even if they are really part of the same network. But I think I can follow the forms along to, to be confident and understand the site. It's it's mostly because I've been to the site before that yeah. I think it's fairly typical to, deline to delineate that, that BVW line. Yeah, and I would I would just add that you know more than just the culvert, which certainly is is carrying the stream. There was obviously earth has been moved around, and historically, I imagine this BBW was continuous. But whatever time this access way got put in years and years ago, um, the land was raised and dried it out, which is now causing this to be discontinuous. Originally, no doubt, <laughs> you would yeah. imagine these connected one way or another. I still consider myself relatively new to reviewing these. Um, but I would think that uh, it is consistent in the review uh, of that BVW delineation. Um, I would think that we probably have enough in front of us um, for that mean annual high water mark to be a check and, and probably for the BVW to be a check because really the vegetation I think it's more points than just the soil cores. So is that accurate? Does he have multiple points where he does the vegetation form? I don't think he logged the vegetation. Um, no. Certainly he uh, reviewed the vegetation at each and every flag, looking for that point where, you know, there's there's the predominance of wetland versus upland vegetation. So yeah, so that's a little bit of the the, the crux of it, uh, Sean. Is that there? We only have one point at the bottom of the first, if you will, the first um, yeah um, bordering area where we have yeah. forms on. And the rest of it, we would have to make the assumption that everything was done the same way um, down through the area and whether it's the vegetation whether it's uh, just a one soil area um i 
Um, I mean, sorry, I, I got a little dry water in my throat there for a second. Um, <laughs> um, and I think it's, uh, you know, my understanding is that, that you know, same as it is with NOIs, where in effect the, the commission is accepting delineation, that certainly um, uh, knowledge of having walked the site um, in order to help make that determination as to whether this is accurate is appropriate to uh, include in your deliberation. Um, this is Kate Devlin. Where I where I'm hesitant is because I haven't walked the site. Um, so having to trust just one data point <laughs> for a big area is is um, kind of challenging to me. And to clarify, I I'm familiar with the site, but I haven't walked it since the flagging was up or relative to a review for the boundary of a bordering vegetated wetland sure. I meant more in the course of the yes this is highly engineered grounds that my expectation is the BVW was fairly clearly delineated but I don't know that other than from this one point I think that's sure. a sticky issue yeah and as I read it through is this it's 900 feet and it's combined 900 feet and there's a big chunk in the middle that's not listed as wetland so it's it's a long stretch of the brook um with only one point of field notes um so perhaps you know we want to um continue the uh the hearing until the next meeting, which is it's only two weeks away, uh, the 28th, I believe is the right date, um, and do a, a field visit in the meantime. And, you know, Chris, maybe we can meet with some of your reps there, or maybe um, uh, Ward would even come out and talk to us without going to the extent of, of you know, requiring a full peer review uh, at this point. We could, if we could get if we could take a, uh, a closer look by the commissioners uh, before we would um, make final decision, maybe maybe that's the way to go. I don't know. What does anybody else think? I would feel a lot more comfortable if I could walk the site and see the flags myself um, mm -hmm. prior to making the decision tonight. And I have time in the next two weeks to do so. Um, likewise, same for me. Um, Kate I can yeah. certainly take a walk down there in the next two weeks. And Mary, okay. Uh, ben, I know you have some connection issues. Um, so that'd probably be good. And we'll have to coordinate a date because if we have more than. You're muted right now. I am? Oh, no, I, we just lost you for a moment. Okay. Um, I'll check with Amy, but we'll have to look at the dates because um, it'll be in. Yeah, we'll have to look at the open meeting laws and regulations so we can get it posted. Um, but I, I think because of just the importance here and some of the um, the questions that have been raised tonight, and probably most of them in mine, I'm sorry, but I read through it a lot today. <laughs> um, We lost you again. I, you must be cutting in and out. I see your lips moving, but I'm not hearing you. And not now. I I agree. I think it'll be pretty clear once we go see it in the field too. Kate, I wonder if your headphones gone out. Well, does someone want to make a motion that we um, get back to this in two weeks? Because, yeah. Does that sound good to you, Pete? Just wave. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I was told at my last meeting that you don't have to make a, a motion to continue a hearing, that you can just continue it. But okay. I think it probably doesn't hurt. Well, I can. I move that we uh, um, continue the hearing on the ANRAD 
for the ad hoc senior housing committee uh, to the next scheduled meeting of uh, the September 28th at 6 p.m. I second that. Uh, I'll do a roll call vote. Uh, Anne Mary. Anne Mary Clutier, aye. Kate Devlin. Kate Devlin, aye. Ben Byrne. Ben Byrne, aye. Pete Law, I'll just look for a thumbs up. Blink twice for yes. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Sean, Sean Libby, aye. <laughs> Motion passes. Okay. And we'll be happy to have someone out there when uh, if something gets uh, formally scheduled. Thank you very much, Chris. I really appreciate the time that you spent with us tonight. And I know that Pete would be conveying that gratitude as <laughs> uh, were we to hear him. <laughs> All right. So, thank you. And uh, we'll see you two weeks from now. Great. Thank you. Yeah. Bye now. You're on again, Pete. There you I'm go. on again? Yep. Yeah. Wow. Because I had a notice. I was trying to get a hold of Amy that the host had to unmute me. Oh, uh, uh, I was looking and you weren't, my screen was not showing you muted. How weird. Uh, um, yeah, well, well, thank you, Sean, for jumping in there. <laughs> Everything's good, so, yeah. Okay, so I, uh, oops, and there you go again. Um, that is weird. So I will um, write to you guys to see uh, what we can come up. I take it you want to coordinate a site visit together. Um, so I'll have to give two days notice. So maybe we can try for next week. Um, if if necessary, the flagging will be obvious in the field. So I think it's important that Pete and, you know, one other see it. And then I think the others can follow with, I'm I'm comfortable with just going to see the flagging and hearing from Pete what he heard from Ward Smith regarding uh, decision making processes and if that helps avoid having to do an open meeting law thing yeah i mean essentially you can even go as long as you agree sort of not to discuss it or make any um decisions you know while you're there um it, yeah i mean and certainly if you go individually you don't have to i think that's fine you just can't talk about um what you're seeing until the next meeting so if people are good with that, I'll leave it at that. People can go when they wish. Uh, yeah, Pete, we're not I wish I could. You. Um, I, I know that we take this uh, seriously, and I like that we do so. Um, I know that other towns do not take the open meeting law nearly as seriously as we do, and would certainly go meet with whoever in the field um, and not think twice of it. Uh, so well, I'm fine with however we want to go proceed. I'll let you guys know back and forth. Okay, uh, well, I, uh, yeah, Pete, you and I can correspond tomorrow and figure out what we want to do. Okay. I don't know if you can hear me, but another town just got blasted for uh, open meeting laws from the attorney general. So that's <laughs> why I'm a little uh, little hesitant on some of these things. I don't look good in arms and spikes. Okay, good. Now we can hear you. Um, I don't know why. Yeah, mm -hmm. I've just been sitting here. <laughs> okay. Well, good. Yeah, if, uh, Amy, if you want to send out a couple of dates and if people can join together and we can do it that way and you know, cover the law, and if not, anybody can watch it, and everybody knows where it is, and, and take a look, but uh, we try to get it next week, and then we'll be ready for the 28th. Uh, great. Um, I didn't mean to get through so many of the details, but I just could not figure out in this field notes. <laughs> I, I was so grateful for your questions, Pete, because um, <laughs> I thought it was me, not just missing something. <laughs> 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 have to make a lot of assumptions here you know what that means so. yeah, um, i was kind of surprised when they sent it and i was looking at it going really you know <laughs> it's like yeah uh, yeah it's um quite the scroll yeah so anyways okay um upcoming meeting would then be the 28th and we'll do a field block once we get that chairman next week and otherwise we could probably take a uh, 
motion to adjourn unless there's any other comments or questions tonight. I'll make a motion to adjourn at 731. I'll second that motion. Yeah, motion on the table second. I think everybody probably agree. Don't say anybody. So take a quick roll call. Uh, Sean Libby. Aye. Uh, Kate. Kate Devlin, aye. And Byrne. And Byrne, aye. And Mary Clayer. And Mary Cloutier, aye. And Pete Lai. So we're, we're done for tonight.